Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you guys some quick simple tips to get your mud to stick to the plaster well and also make sure you don't have problems with delamination. So I want to keep it simple and so we're just going to use things that you might already have. So what I've got right here, I've got a crusty old paintbrush, I have just a tiny bit of water in this bucket, I've got some carpenter's glue, so this is just regular carpenter's glue as you guys can see. Just gonna pour a bunch of that in there. I'm gonna just mix it around with this brush so that it gets a little bit thinned down, but not too much. Okay, that's looking better. So now I'm just gonna take this stuff and I'm gonna start spreading it on here. And you could use a roller. There's a number of things you could do, but what I'm really going for here is to also get it like underneath the old layers. This has all kinds of layers of wallpaper and plaster. What this is, is actually a chimney that's been plastered over and there's been water damage that's made it delaminate. So I can feel this stuff skinning over pretty quick and I'm just making sure to get it under the edges more than anything. It's not even the old plaster that I'm worried about, like it's not the broad surface, it's just under the edges to make sure that that stuff all gets held down and I don't get loose spots and blisters when I put my Kota Quick Set mud on. Now I'm going to wait for it all to get tacky, which is happening pretty quick. So we're going to stay in the vein of keeping it simple and keeping this with tools you probably have. So I'm just going to put a little bit more water in here. We're getting ready to mix up the mud. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glue to this mud. I'm mixing up quick set. It's going to be 20 minute quick set and I'm putting some more glue in here to make sure that the adhesion is top notch. Partly because the brand of quick set that I like to use can delaminate sometimes. Anyways, you want to get this nicely mixed up. You don't want to see all those stringy lines in there. So take your time, make sure that's mixed in or you're going to get glue chunks in your mud. That's looking thoroughly diluted. Next, I'm going to pour how much quickset I need in here. And that should be plenty, maybe just a little more for good luck. It's always better to mix a tiny bit more than not enough. And I'm just going to get it mixed up. So I need more water in here. I always err on the side of too little water at first, then too much. I could be using my drill, guys, but I'm keeping this simple for you. Just to show that you don't need a lot of fancy tools to get this done. The glue makes the mud feel way stickier. There was quite a lot of glue in there water. I want to make sure that it's not too lumpy because otherwise what I probably have is I've got some plain water quick set and I've got some glue water quick set. And we want to make sure that it's fairly uniform and fairly mixed through. Although the mix on the wall when I start spreading it is also going to make it a little bit better. This is some gluey, sticky quick set. Let's take a close look at this. So it's mostly dry. It's just a bit tacky. Like I can feel that these drips are sticky. It's a bit tacky. If there is any actual long drips like loose water in there still, it's just going to mix in with the mud. But right now we're going to have excellent adhesion here. All of this is going to be locked down and when the quick set sets up, which is 20 minute, I better get on it, then it's all going to be really stable and locked down. I forgot to mention, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have majorly loose edges. That's why it's been scraped out so much because I kept sort of chiseling away until I got edges that were fairly well adhered. Like if it's flopping and you can hear that it's hollow behind there, you need to take more out until it's totally 
you know, mostly stuck. It's just the very little edges we don't want blisters. Now using whatever tool you're most comfortable with, get the stuff on the wall, man, lady, whomever. is to have your plaster fall off the wall. It's not cool when your patches fall off the wall. It's a big hump right here. Not too worried about that. Doesn't need to be completely perfect here. We just want to make sure the wall's not falling off anymore. You know, I almost put too much glue in that mix. Oh well. Okay, there's our high spot right there. The other thing that this does is it makes the mud really strong when it dries. So get it flattened out as best you can. to be perfect at this coat you can put another one on which I will be and I'm messing about because there's this giant bulge right here okay just gonna have to leave it at that can flatten this down when it kicks off. We're gonna have to leave it. Let's get a look at that. I got a hole up there that I couldn't quite fill. Got some stuff that needs to be knocked down there. There's that big bulge right there where it sticks out way more. As you can see, I didn't scrape it totally flat. Like I left it a little bit above the edges in a lot of cases. Like right here, it's pretty heavy, but that's just what my trowel was telling me to do with it. So I go with what my trowel tells me, not what the wall is. This is mostly set up. It's taken a long time, actually. You know what? I think I added like a bit too much glue. So as a rule of thumb, I would not exceed a 110 ratio mixture. So like 10 parts water, one part glue. Just gonna knock down my high spots, scrape the top. could use it. You can see it's kind of flattening out that lift off there. What else do we need? Right here. So you just shave it down. So this is just regular quick set. You know the stuff that you get off the shelves at Home Depot or Rona. Oh, but here it's over the paint and now it's pulling. So I'm actually going to kind of leave it alone. It was good enough. And it's where it's over the old painted stuff and it's a bit thinner that it was the worst. You can always test it with your finger. If your finger's sticking to it, too soon. Okay, that all feels pretty good. All right, but this doesn't have to be totally perfect. So let's get a coat on this. So this is now just all purpose mud, nicely mixed up, actually with a mixing paddle and a drill. Do you guys need a how to mix drywall mud video? Would that be helpful? Let me know in the comments. And I'm putting this on pretty thick, like quarter inch to an eighth of an inch in spots. But that's the loading coat. They're not my finished passes.
I want to leave maybe like a small eighth on here or a couple mils. So I'm going to start with like a quarter inch because that way I'll be able to leave a nice smooth coat. Now you guys may have heard me say that I let my trowel talk to me because it's my trowel that tells me where the big dives and humps and stuff are in the wall by what the lines do. And that could be a whole video in and of itself. I'll need the right job to show you guys that. Right now I'm just trying to smooth this out so that it can be sanded off nice and nice and smooth, nice and not even flat, just without bubbles. That's good enough. Needs a little knife work at the top. I can live with that. Now let's take a look. So the mud's all nice and smooth without any major bubbles or pinholes. So it's gonna sand really uniformly. There's some lift offs there, some spots more than others. You can see there's that high spot. But generally it's all really smooth and it's gonna sand out in just the one coat. Well, there's one method you can use to make sure that your quick set drywall mud sticks to the plaster and you have a hard, durable, long lasting finish. Well, a hard, durable, long lasting finish underneath the cheap, crumbly drywall mud. Let's not compare drywall mud to plaster. But anyways, there's one more method to making sure your mud sticks to your wall when you're doing those patches. So thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Hope you guys got something out of this video. It's it. It's all I have to say. Video's done.